without the spoiler on it, and that's with the spoiler. And that's the dark wheels that are only available in the performance model, which I decided not to get since it's a silver car. Okay. 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 All right. Well, so, I can have you go ahead and bring out the key for me. Got one in the front for the front trunk, one up top for the door locks, and one in the rear for the rear trunk. So let's go ahead and walk up to the front. And of course, there's the front. Not a whole lot to it. The only thing you're going to personally have to worry about. Is the windshield and washer fluid up there? We'll get a warning on the touch screen when that gets low, or we'll top it off and bring it in for service either way. But um, any emergency release. <laughs> right. Got that there just in case. But otherwise, um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. When it comes to closing this, pretty important, it is an all aluminum hood. So it's not something that you want to slam down. You definitely don't want to put anything on top of the hood because you could crease it if there's something heavy there. Best thing to do is bring it down like this. Both hands on either side of the teeth. Give it a press. You must have the part about the fingers not being under. <laughs> fingers not being under. It's also a good thing to pay attention to. That's right. But yeah, just going ahead and pressing it gently like that. Walk around to the back. You can press in the back of the teeth and slide. Got the split seats. You can go ahead and hold these down just by pulling up on the button on either side. Gives up a little bit more space there. I haven't ever seen it with both of them folded down. Yeah, sure. You can go ahead and do that. Just to get an idea of how much space there is. It's just a pretty big yeah. piece of the space. All right. Good. Twin bed in there. <laughs> and well, between having these folded down and, you know, front front, you've got it. Now, for this trunk itself, you can actually open and close it from the key. You can open and close it from the touch screen, or you can do it back here as well. So to close it, we're just going to push this button. And then, uh, you know, let's say you're walking up to it and... Maybe you can't get to the key quite as quick. Uh, it's actually a handy way to do it just by pushing this button here, as long as you're close by. And I'll go ahead and you just push that once. Mm -hmm. And there's also storage under here as well. Okay. Now, for some people, you might actually have a lower roof at your garage, or maybe you're at a public parking garage and you don't want this going all the way up. In that case, you can actually set a memory setting where you just put it to whatever height you want. You can hold this button down here for about three seconds or so until we get a beep. There it is. We'll close it. And then the next time we open it up, push on this here. And I'll stop right where we set it. It's handy. Oh, yeah. Handy for my wife who can't reach it if it's open all the way. <laughs> sure, sure. To reset it, we're just going to push it all the way back up. Hold that button again, and we're good. Okay. Oh, yeah. I guess now is a good time as any to go ahead and go over the charging setup. So this is your mobile connector right here. Got it plugged into the NEMA 1450 outlet. Real simple setup. You've got a series of different adapter heads. I'll show you a couple there in the back. But you just push this button, disconnect it, line the Tesla T up on top to connect it up. That's good. And so that's the same connector that will be uh, used at my house when the. Uh, well, yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. Did you do the, the temporary setup with the 650? Uh, not, no, I'm just using it for standard. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so. Um, 
Gotcha. Okay, so we'll just be uh, talking about it. Yes. <laughs> so I'll leave you with my card. Hopefully you won't have to use it, but if you do, you can always get a hold of me. Thanks very much. You're welcome. So um, in that case, when the high-power wall connector arrives, it's going to have its own cord attached to it that will be mounted on the wall. So you'll just use that when you're at home. Put this in the back and yep. use them on the go. So plug this in here. Green light indicates there's power going to it. And then we'll come over here. Disconnect this from the charge port. And uh, if you're ready to charge the car, there's a couple different ways you can open this. You can do it from the touch screen in there, or if you've got the cord handy and it's plugged in, simply pressing on the button at the top. Opens that up. White light indicates it's ready. So you push it on in. Goes to green. So it's going to flash different speeds indicating how full it is. Right now we're pretty much topped off. It's going to go to solid green in just a moment. But uh, if it was lower, you'd see a really quick blink. As soon as it starts getting to the top, it slows down and then goes solid green when it's actually full. So if we walk over here to the screen, you can see a couple details on what's going on. Uh, right now, yeah. oh, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> so if I close it, it'll switch back over to the other? Yep, that's right. We actually need to close it just a little harder. There we go. Okay. And we'll see that currently it's drawing about 40 amps, 205 volts. On this side, it's going to show us how many miles we're going to add over the course of the hour. So that's going to ramp up slowly, but we're at about 16 miles per hour of range that it's going to add. And then just below that, you have a number indicating how many miles we've added since it's been plugged in. I'm just kind of giving you a handle on when you're charging there. Now, if you can go ahead and lock it for me, just press on the top of the key once. There we go. The screen goes off, and if we walk back here to the charge port, it's now black. So it's still taking in a charge, but if it was sitting outside at night, you don't have flashing lights and stuff attracting people up to it. And then if you try to pull this out, it's now locked in there. You can't remove it. But press on the top of the key twice for me again. Push this down. Comes right up. Okay. That same pin that pops up and locks it in place is actually going to pop up automatically after about two minutes if we were just to leave it open and walk away. Reason being there is it's going to block the entrance so nobody can come up and tamper with it. So you might actually come back, find that this isn't going in. If that's the case, close the door, open it back up, and you should be good. One more thing I'll show you here, too. If you ever see the color yellow, kind of hard to get, but there we go. Yellow indicates it's not in all the way. So if you ever see that, push a little bit further. Goes to green. Okay. good. I'll come over here. We can just back up and show you some of your adapters. So since you're going to be using that standard wall outlet at home, you'll just put that adapter on the end of your connector there. Okay. Put it on in. And then you also have this, which is the J1772. That's for public charging stations. In that case, you would just go ahead and attach this on to the end of the public charging station cord. And then insert it into the charge port just like that. Okay. And you'll be good. Fortunately, you do have a lot of those over in Orlando. And the OUC has a bunch of different stations out there. So. How do those usually work? They charge for the time? or is Well, it... um, most of them are actually free. Hmm. Uh, part of the federal program where the stations were actually provided uh, to the different owner, well, to the different you know, municipalities or uh, utilities. And uh, they turn around and install them and then provide it as a free service. But uh, most of them in Florida are through a company called Coulomb Technologies. Uh, they're called Charge Points is the mm -hmm. name of their service. And uh, though it's free, they actually have um, an RFID authorization system that essentially unlocks it, and then you can go ahead and use it at that point. So to activate one of those, you'd actually need uh, an RFID-enabled credit card okay. or what's called a, char a uh, charge pass, which is simply just a little plastic uh, card that you can wave in front of the device, unlock it, and get it that way. So those are free. You can go online. And, and what's usually the charge? How does the charge time compare on that versus the charging station you would have at home? Or Yeah, so, um, well, a couple different ways. So uh, right now what we've got it plugged into is a NEMA 1450. And at 240 volts, uh, 40 amps, you're looking at roughly 25 to 30 miles of range or so for every hour it's plugged in on average. Um, for the high-power wall connector that Steve is getting, it's going to be a lot quicker. It's going to be about 60 miles or so of range for every hour it's plugged in. It's a higher amperage, just 240 volt, 80 amp. 
uh, public charging stations are actually um, going to be even slower than what we have it plugged into now. Okay. 240 volt, 30 amp, you're looking at about 20 miles of range for every hour it's plugged in for one of those. And what about for just a conventional 110 volt outlet? Uh, well, about five miles of range for every hour that's plugged in. Okay. So if it's completely depleted, which, you know, in most cases it won't be, looking at about 52 hours or so. Well, of course, if you're using it for daily commuting and you're on a public, plug it in someplace in four hours or whatever to mm -hmm. do extra days drive. That's right, yeah. Just going ahead and topping it off at the end of the day, perfectly fine. And, of course, you know, if you're leaving it overnight, then you're going to get a decent amount of range back on there before you head out in the morning. So should be just fine. I should stop it and restart it. 